please subscribe to help you and your motorcycle perform better. My name is Dave Moss. I tune approximately 3,500 bikes per year. This is Two Clicks Out. Now steal the microphone, Matt. Good morning, Mr. Moss. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. Has this been measured, done? Uh, no, it hasn't. It's not, so it needs to go in the chalk. Okay. Okay. What year is it? 2013. How many miles? 3,700. Okay. When was the last time we reset the travel indicator on the right leg? The travel indicator? Mm-hmm. You mean the uh, trip odometer? No. Nope. Uh, that. Because it is right now smashed at the very bottom of the fork. Did you reset that at all today? No. Okay. So at this point, we'll go off measurements and see where we're at. Okay. We'll see where the overall balance of the chassis is. Okay. You're riding in B minus. How many times have you ridden here? Uh, first time uh, with a motorcycle. Oh, really? Yeah. You car guy? Car too, yeah. All right, so we're going to talk cars. We're not going to talk bikes because I can transfer all that information to you where you go click. Okay. The only difference with the car is your we're tuned flex in the frame. Yeah. So outside of that, it's identical. So I can talk understeer, oversteer, over push condition, lift, everything. So that way you can go, oh, well, it's easier. So the front is 30 mil, and our goal is 30 to 40 to start. Okay. So at that point, you're in the ballpark with the front. This is a heavy braking track. Yeah. So you would technically run a slightly different spring here to compensate for the braking. Okay. In your case, you would run a stiffer coil over top. Okay. Right? So as that travel gets in, as you start getting to the, the small spring, the hardness of it takes over and stops the bottoming. Right. On the back, it's no different, 30 to 40. Now with a high horsepower bike, we go 25 to 30 in the rear because of the power you've got. Okay. So let's see what we have. Go ahead, dismount. Okay. So static sag. We've got to be able to pick it up on a bike, and you want 10 to 15, so that's good. Okay. On the front, we have the same thing, but generally it's 20 to 25. So static-wise means you're left alone in the seat. If you have zero static, you're getting hammered. Okay. Bang, because everything tops out. So as far as the tape measure and the classroom piece goes, you're in the ballpark. Yeah. Doesn't mean out there, <laughs> as you know, it's gonna work. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. We don't want it too stiff to create understeer. So when you're braking, if you are braking and leaning, especially with threshold braking, you want it to be in the part of the zone that is least three-quarter travel. Okay. Forks are shorter, the bike turns. Right. So at that point, we want to find the setting between preload and compression to set the descent rate, steel first, oil second, so that you get to the part of the stroke when you're ready that the bike turns with you. Okay. Down, up, and stop. We can't have any oscillation. Watch your front fork. So that is a fail, period. It's binary, black and white. That's a heavy front straight braking. Yeah, but you can't have that. So you were at 10 out. There's eight. Better. Yeah. So it has to be next. In the back. Watch your wheel. <laughs> Doing. So, rebound is too fast. You're at 10. 8. Watch your wheel. Yeah, just right in there. Yeah. 8 and 8. From yep. Back. So the weight transfer is the critical part there, right? Same with the car. So your weight transfer needs to be 11 o'clock to 1 o'clock. Yep. If you're outside of that parameter, you're just fighting the weight transfer. 
12. So 10 compression in the rear, 8 rebound. Okay. As you use nitrogen, it's usually a 2 PSI gain, roughly. Okay. We don't. So you're looking for somewhere in the region of a 4 to 6 PSI gain, cold to hot. Yeah. On your inlap, if it's a dawdle inlap, then you're going to use lose heat. Yeah. So your minimum gain is four. I've seen about three here, four at Thunder Hill when it was really hot. So right. And it's so about getting 130 in the middle of both the tires, so not hot enough, but. Uh, so if you're marginal four, then drop a psi out of both. Okay. And let the tire get heated through the carcass. Okay. That's where the pressure with nitrogen is so critical because at that point you guarantee in flex and you're managing heat. Yeah. Here we have to manage water vapor and air. Yeah. So it's a little more problematic. So you can use nitrogen, but it's a process. Yeah. And then you find temperature, lap time, just as you would with a car pressure. Okay. All right. Can I come back after maybe a lap? Just kind of you are required to, yeah. otherwise it gets really expensive because I have to find you. Yeah. And I'll zeros get added. Right off here. <laughs> yeah, and just join the line. Okay. Well, the whole point is to help people with information, right? Yeah. And no matter what your discipline, I can relate to you in terms that you understand. And the car world is identical apart from weight transfer through the chassis. Yeah. And that's just balance of the car. You feel a lot more and it's more intimate with the motorcycle. That's... Because all your senses are there versus being stuck and you, there's a, a piece of you that gives away to the fact that you're in a cage. Yeah. So you're focused on skill execution versus the emotion and the wind and all the other factors that you just don't get in a car. You get heat. Yeah. And you cook. Yeah. <laughs> are those Bolin's full-on upgrade, upgraded forks or cartridges? Those are, those are Olin's upgraded forks, complete. Complete. Yeah. So they're new version of Road and Track. Feel great, yeah. Uh, from acceleration, zipper, braking, it was the low speed corners that I definitely felt a lot more confidence. I wasn't finding keep it up. It was, it was a wreck down itself and I could adjust a lot better. Um, so you could change your line? Yeah, I was on the low speed, uh, I guess turn, turn two. That was where I felt the most. It, it was a lot more supportive yeah. as I was going up. So, um, I maintain that same tire pressure. I think I'm with this new confidence, I'm just gonna keep doing the same and just kinda, you know, the bike changes now. Right. It's gonna run again, uh, unless you see anything different. So the part that's really important is, for you, there's brake application, threshold pressure, and then brake off. Yeah. Your part now is to literally, for one, that corner, yeah. in before the kink in the hill, and then coming into the last turn, Get your braking zone for on and off dialed. Okay. So that we're putting the same load with the highest speed corners into the bike. Okay, I'll focus on the high speed kind of braking and just get that consistent. So what we're looking for compared to a car is pressure and duration. Okay. We need to feel that with our fingertip, right? Versus you can feel the wheel in the car lock and yeah. you know where threshold is. We can't afford that. Yeah. So we're gonna creep up on that threshold, we're gonna find duration and pressure, how much do you need for how long? So you break on and off point. Okay. So only on three corners. First, last, first, and over the back straight coming in to cotton corners. Okay. Because you come flying out of two, ripping up there, and then it's before you take the right and then over the hill. Okay. Uh Last, Last, first, after two. Okay, let's keep hammering that. Just get that zone defined. Okay. Once you know pressure and duration, that'll stay relatively constant. Okay. And if that stays somewhere around there, we're actually too stiff. Okay. Because it could go lower and turn easier. So you're still expending just a little too much energy. Okay. With that in mind, we'll see what you come back with next. The other part was your rear tire on this side wasn't as good as it should have looked when you came in last time, so let's take a look. So through here, we now have the sandy beach or an ocean at 10,000 feet. Okay. Before, all the way through that joint was yeah. really stressed. Now the joint and the line of the joint is symmetrical with the outside of the tire. Okay. 
So there's a nice balance between throttle, spring tension and damping with pressure and geometry. To get the sandy beach sometimes takes two or three track days. It might come fairly quickly, yeah. but you're bringing a lot of the car mentality here, which is consistency and behavior. Okay. Because that metronome of doing the right thing at the right time is critical. Yeah. In doing that and where we're at now, the way you've got in the soft section of the tire, there's no tearing on the joint. Okay. So the pressure here could be a pound lower okay. because soft carcass tire needs more heat yeah. throughout and the hard carcass tire doesn't. So all this debris on both sides here, that's this compound wearing fast. I see. So if we drop the rear by one PSI, yeah. that will probably do you for the entire afternoon. Okay, yeah, it was uh, 30 flat cold right before I was kind of going out. And what'd you come in with? Uh, I didn't check it, so I that's came okay. right in here. But... That's all right. So at this point I would say 29 flat on your gauge because pressure now at 90 degrees ambient yeah. versus 55 in the morning, it's quite different with their density. Right. So take one out of it and then we'll see how the debris looks. That generally, when it's cold like that, accelerates your wear by up to 30%. Okay. And we don't want that. And that's always right before you go out. Not right now, all the time. What is I right before going on? Okay, okay you're all set. Instructor, um, okay. and I had to follow with him, so I didn't get to use the maximum intensity, sure. a good amount, um, but I haven't hit that level where I'm confident that's my absolute, I'm breaking too early, so. Um, so I think the little uh, measure on the fork might not be accurate right now. Okay. But uh, it felt good, uh, got up to about 145. Like Excellent. That. So hotter in the day, more confidence, I'm able to uh, take more speed. Yep. Uh, but I'm happy. There's nothing I see that I have. Uh, I'll say. Dropped out one psi yep. the last time, and then it rose three and a half psi uh, post race. So. Okay. So at this point, we're still not stressing the joint. Okay. There's no cold tear. The amount of debris here is a lot less on the surface. Yeah. Almost none. So as far as the pressure goes, the soft part of the carcass is getting to temperature. Okay. So. That's fantastic okay. because you want the soft part of the rubber to get to temperature in the fast sections of the track. We don't care so much on the slow side of the tire and you can see there's still a ton of debris on it. Yeah. And there's a ton of debris on the back of the tread too. And you'll also see triangles. And that's from coasting. We never have a 100% brake, 100% throttle. Yeah. We are mortal. <laughs> we don't do that. I mean, that's just a transition. As you're bleeding the throttle off, you're loading the brake up, right? Yeah. So you can't heel, heel toe a car. Sorry, you can't heel toe a bike. You just can't. Yeah. So what we do is deal with the risk at lean. So it's partial throttle or bleeding off brake pressure. Yeah. Then as you pick the bike up, you're picking the throttle up Right there, because that band of wear goes straight across the tread. And then you can see your triangle starts there. So you're actually picking up the gas going left better, and it could be earlier, this could be another few millimeters over here, but the nature of this track going left, it's park it, right? Fast after the, into the bus stop, it's just quick yeah. through the left. The left up to Phil Hill is smoking quick. The left after is pinned. Yeah. And then you come through the S's and there's a left out, which is you're standing the bike up. I'm probably so, at 80% through that section, so I can take it a little oh, bit yeah. more. And I think I've got, with this, I can use a little bit more. That's where you start to learn and leverage the traction control. Yeah. And just, just as you would with a car, where is your grip level? Okay. And where do the tires tell you the grip level is? Yeah. With, our, with us, with curved tires versus flat tires, it's harder to discern the grip level until you feel your power stutter. Yeah. So at that point, you know where you're at. Yeah, so it's on the sport mode. I haven't had any uh, intervention, so I'm not okay. pushing it, but... Uh, Doesn't matter. We're not far away. Yeah. Okay, I'll do another one. Should I reset the... Yep. And then this last lap, I'll just... Uh, really, the braking's my only... Uh, focus. So. so at that point, 
Let's run a very high quality five laps and off. There's no point going 20 minutes. Let's go out, do our warm up lap, get into it. Okay, five laps, bam, 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 and out. Okay. And finish the day with some precision work. Not sloppy at the end. Nice. <laughs> On the money. I felt great. Um, I probably could have got another 10% more, but just over time, I mean, that's... That's on the money. Okay. As far as the travel you'd be looking for in the data on the car for at threshold with yeah. percentage travel, you want to be 80, 85%, and that's okay. where you're exactly where you're at. On that, it's perfect. How's the tire wear on the other side? Now, because you were focused on braking, a lot more debris on the soft section of the tire this time because it okay. didn't get anywhere near as hot because your focus is braking, not acceleration. Yeah. So cause and effect can rapidly accelerate where based on, as you know, get out there, pound these laps out, do it at this time, get in. Yeah. And with car intervals, it's quicker, generally, unless you're doing a long run for data gathering through temperature. Yeah. So at this point, just slowing down a little bit on a bike can really accelerate your wear. Okay. <laughs> But nicely done. Yeah, it was great. And I told another guy, uh, same bike, I was just behind him, and um, he was like, yeah, you know, I, I don't know if I get the suspension because I'm not there yet. And I was telling him, you know, another guy was like, hey, you know, once you get the suspension done, then you get confidence, and then you yeah. do it, so. You'll never improve until you get it done, ever. Yeah, you don't trust it unless it's, uh, but thank but you, I appreciate it. You're very welcome. Yeah. For some people, it's too big of a leap. It's too hard, and it's too frightening. For some people, I think it's a little humility because they're like, you know what, Plan I don't need it yet. It, it takes someone pulling yeah. them. Yeah. Um, so hopefully he's heeded your advice and we see him tomorrow. I'll be at Thunder Hill tomorrow, but the buddy will be here tomorrow. Well, hopefully he'll come over. Yeah, well. I was wondering if I just have your service for the day. Uh, the suspension was good from last week. It's really just the tire focus. Um, I was told that there might be some, I guess, so the, Drop off. the flat spot here is, from the car world, you're wearing basically one, one edge or one quarter of the front tire for right. caster and camber. With the motorcycle, we wear it where we get on the throttle. Okay. So when you're leveraging electronics, because you come from a data world and you understand throttle application based on traction control, you end up cutting a shelf in the tire. Okay. Because you know, if I do this, it's going to drive out of the corner. Yeah. You didn't come a background of fear and respect in learning the throttle. <laughs> So over time here, this surface stays round, but the soft compound eats. Feel that ledge right there. Yeah. So as soon as you get there, you're stuck. You want to get over that over here, right. you'll, that's your contact patch, about three millimeters. Okay. So as you get over, you'll feel it, whoop, and you've got to catch it with the throttle. For PSI, I started cold 37 front and back. It rose up to 42. I'm thinking that's a little high. For these on the track, we generally want to see them somewhere around 28 hot rear and 34, 36 hot front. Okay. So street pressure on the track will exacerbate that. 27 rear hot, 30. At least 34 hot 34 in the front. Front. Okay. Because you're bringing a lot of understanding from the car world. Yeah. And so you're leveraging all that data and information to ride well. Okay. But the pressure killed you here. Yeah. Do you have a spare rear? No, but I'm, import I'm not uh, against just getting another set. Okay. That will be done by today. Okay. I dropped the temperature. Pre-race was 24 rear. Yep. 30.6 front. Post, 28 rear. So plus four. 32.7 front, plus two. Plus, yeah, so. 30. Now, with speed comes air temperature. It's pretty cold right now. Yeah. What does that do to the front tire? It's gonna cool it. Hold up, cold air. So on track, we'll know if you're at temperature because you'll actually show rubber wearing on the size of the tire. Yeah. Then as you come in, that aggression or purpose and intent is decreased because you saw the checker. Yeah. So instantly with that cold wind, the front tire drops temperature. Yeah. So a lot of people will come in a pound over what they went out on and make the wrong choice because they're reacting to the pressure versus thinking about 20 minutes of this yeah. will make it hot. Yeah. So that's, this wipes off 
And that's, see how that is already chamfered to a yeah. better angle? Yeah. It's got, so it comes here and instead of being round this way, it's now a flattening. Riding a little bit. Yeah. So with that pressure change comes a contact patch which tripled here in width. Yeah. You were that wide and now it's wide to there. So if you keep going with what you're doing, hydraulic settings are good. It's a little bit harsh on compression at the moment. Yeah. But I don't know where you're at riding percentage-wise. 70, 75, 80? About there. Yeah, just lines, gears. Okay. Just kind of getting a feel for when I'm at the... All right, so I'm going to take a click of compression out just because the tire is asking for it. Okay. And in terms of that ass, this sandy beach look, yeah. there's a lot of impact craters all over the place up here. Is that like little... Well, the shock's making the tire do too much work. Uh, okay. There's no balance. Okay. So it'd be like on your coilover, you're actually limiting your stroke to 70%, and now the tire is your suspension at that point because the shock ceases to move. Yeah. So with impact craters all through this area, giving it an orange peel look, yeah. that's too stiff on compression, okay. which is accelerating the wear on the tire. So much better. Yeah. Travel's good. Now, what we're looking for is the debris on the edges here. Yeah. If you weren't getting to temperature, your compound joint there would actually deform because this needs a lot of heat not to rip itself apart. And this is the slow side of the tire. On the hot side of the tire, we've got vertical lines coming this way, which are basically and you can see that line goes down, dips, and comes up. So, rebound too fast. And that should show there and there. So it's eating away this section of tire right there. And those lines that go this way, they grow to here, they dig in right there, and then they fade going back. So we're going to only put one in on rebound, one out of compression okay. to stabilize the bike and make the relationship between suspension and tires share equally. Okay. That makes sense. Okay. Dave Moss can tune your suspension no matter where you are on the planet via his remote tuning service. Contact Dave on Facebook or by email, dave at davemosstuning.com.